action. I'm joined from Sheffield by Labour MP Clive Betts, Chair of the Communities and Local Government Select Committee, and by Mike Freer, Conservative MP for Finchley and Golders Green, and the newly appointed Parliamentary Private Secretary to Community Secretary Eric Pickles. Clive Betts, starting with you, why should Londoners care about the powers that the Assembly have? Well, the Mayor's a very powerful position, and clearly the Mayor will always have more publicity and more recognition than the Assembly, but it's important because of the powers the Mayor has now, and extra powers the may, Mayor may gain in the future, that there is a body which holds him to account, scrutinises what he's doing, asks questions, uh, and if necessary, in certain cases, uh, amends the budget if two-thirds majority think the budget should be amended. Uh, what we were saying was that the, that the Assembly hasn't got sufficient powers to hold the Mayor to account in that way. In the end, the Mayor will have the higher profile, but scrutiny and questioning is vitally important. So was it set up incorrectly by Nick Rainsford, the former Labour Minister? No, it's grown over the years in a way which means there are inconsistencies. First of all, the Assembly doesn't have the power to call in uh, proposals from the Mayor in a way that a scrutiny committee of a local council, any local mm. council, up and down the country would. So the Mayor has a new policy idea. Before that's implemented, the Assembly should have a right to question him on it. We mentioned the budget there. There's now £16 billion the Mayor spends. When he puts forward proposals for day-to-day -day expenditure for the next year, the Assembly can actually amend that. But on capital expenditure, £5 billion a year on things like housing and economic development, the Assembly has no say in that at all. all right. That's an inconsistency and it can't be right. What specific powers would you like the Assembly to have? Are you saying that in order to call in certain measures, they should be given a wider remit in terms of a two-thirds majority to block or reject any of his proposals? Well, we're saying, first of all, that they should have the powers to call things in. They don't even have that basic power at present. In what way? Uh, well, simply, the mayor has a new policy proposal. He comes up with an idea. He produces... Uh, sure, uh, I understand uh, that. What I mean is how should they be able to well, call they, it they in? They should be allowed to say to the mayor, hold on a minute, uh, before you implement this, you must produce a report for us, the Assembly members, for us to consider, for you to come in and, be, and your officials to be questioned about it. In the end, it'll be the mayor's decision to go ahead with it, but the Assembly ought to have a right to question it and expose any flaws in it. It. And then, of course, in the end, the Assembly does have powers to reject uh, the Mayor's strategies by a two-thirds majority, yes. except, of course, the Mayor's policing plan, which it can't touch at all. Now, that's an inconsistency that needs putting right. Right. I mean, Mike Freer, isn't it ridiculous that we have this body and they can't, with the powers they have, scrutinise what he or she in the future is doing? I think there's a couple of points to bear in mind. that The Assembly was set up deliberately that it couldn't fetter the Mayor. Uh, now, that may have been a mistake by the previous Labour government. but Should it change? There is an argument that there's some tidying up to be done, and certainly I think that DCLG can look at that. Uh, but it's not a priority at the moment. This is uh, not coming up on the doorsteps. The key issue for Londoners are some of the things that we're doing on housing uh, and on high streets. Um, and the London electorate do... You know, they can call the mayor to account every four years. They're not clamouring for change. If the Labour Party want to argue whether Jack and Jill sits on a committee, I think they've got their priorities wrong. There are more important things to do in parliamentary time. So you're saying that the mayor can time. do what he likes no, in four years in mayor... terms of policing, in terms of transport. These are big budgets yeah. and these are big areas of responsibility. You've admitted pretty well the Assembly can't do anything about what uh, the mayor does. The mayor, can, the mayor is accountable to the electorate of London. The Assembly have the ability to question him and ask him to think again. And I think there's a, there is an argument for tidying up some of the powers, but at the moment there are other pressing issues that we need to deal with for London. Give me an example where the Assembly has managed to block or stop a major proposal put forward well, by the Mayor. The main the power mayor. they have is that they have a power to block the budget if they can get two-thirds majority. But that's a big deal because you'd be that voting down the whole budget yeah. then, wouldn't you? And that's the way it was set up. It Shouldn't was... they have that power over police issues and transport? They have the power to question and probe the mayor and ask him to think again. But actually but putting new powers in is something we should look at but not straight away. It's not a priority, Heidi. Well, listen, the, I think the GLA has been in existence now um, for about 13 years and the Mayor of London has obviously been there. It's time to look at these things again and look afresh, I think. This year we had a very interesting set of circumstances with the Mayor's budget, which will result in one in ten fire stations in London closing. The majority of Londoners don't want this to happen. The majority of Assembly members didn't want this to happen and yet he was able to steamroller it through. I don't 
see how that can really be right. So Londoners' wishes are actually being overridden by an all-too-powerful mayor. We heard from Tony Travers, who's an expert in local government. He says they just don't have the powers to stop him. I don't accept that there's a fundamental problem here. I think the mayor is doing a great job for London. We've that, already spoken about the, China and That's not the question. Like it's that. about whether the Assembly the, can scrutinise effectively. I think can scrutinise effectively. They produce some fabulous reports on a range of issues affecting London that are taken into consideration by the mayor, indeed by government as well, and I think they're doing a good job. Yes, there may be some tidying up to do, but I would certainly see it at that level rather than anything fundamental. Well, Clive Betts, it's a tidying up exercise. It doesn't sound like the recommendations of your report are going to be taken on, but one of the, one of the issues you've raised is removing Assembly members from GLA's executive bodies, but wouldn't that just result in even less transparency? You wouldn't have an Assembly member there looking at what's going on. No, you would. You'd have the Assembly members doing the scrutiny of what the Mayor was doing, not getting it confused and muddled by some Assembly members being on the Mayor's executive bodies, so it's not clear uh, who is responsible, whether it's the Mayor or the Assembly. And we've got this inconsistency, as Tony Travers was saying, uh, that there are Assembly members on the Fire Authority, they're none on the Mayor's Office for Policing, there can be Assembly members on Transport for London, but none have been appointed, and there's no right to be any Assembly members on the Waste Authority, but one is appointed as the Mayor's representative, but not a representative of the Assembly. If now, all that, all that really is a mess that needs tidying up. And let me make it clear, this is not a Labour Party proposal. This is a cross-party proposal from a select committee of the House of Commons. All right, let me just put to my friend, would you be a little more urgent about this issue if there was a Labour mayor in place at City Hall rather than a Conservative? No, I don't think this has been called for. I think there, there is an argument for tidying up, which I think is accepted. But it's not a priority at the moment for parliamentary time. We've got other important things to do, housing and high streets in London, and the Mayor is delivering for London and is accountable to the people of London. We can tidy up when we've got time in the parliamentary calendar, what that be? but it's not urgent. I can't, I'm not a part of the parliamentary draftsman team, so I can't tell you <laughs> exactly when. But it's but not it, any time soon, is it? it's not a priority at the moment. All right, Mike Freer, Clive Betts, thank you both. An investigation by this programme... In